1917 was a monumental year in world history. The U.S. entered World War I, the Russian Revolution began, and Chris's famous hot dogs opened for business in Montgomery, Alabama. 105 years later, this beloved institution is still going strong. Melissa Bowman takes us there. Dexter Avenue in Montgomery, Alabama has been the site of many historic events. It's also home to Chris's Hot Dogs. I can literally walk up my front door, look to the right, and the Capitol's there. My next Martin Luther King's Church, and look to the left, and you see the, the Fountain of Court Square, uh, next to where Rosa Parks got on the bus, next to the Winter Building that started the Civil War. Chris's isn't just adjacent to all that history, it's also part of it. It even has its own historic marker. In 1917, Greek immigrant Chris Katichas pursued his American dream and opened a restaurant, choosing to serve hot dogs for a special reason. He wanted so much to be American. That was important to him. He loved this country. And what's more American than a hot dog? And those hot dogs have stood the test of time. Chris's has been in business more than a century, operated by the same family in the same location all that time. My dad started it, and I have a son, Gus. Something happens to me tomorrow, it's, it's going to be in good hands. Eating at Chris's feels like being in a museum. Mementos line the walls, as well as photos of countless famous patrons. Elvis Presley, Martin Luther King Jr., and frequent guest Hank Williams. There's rumors that he was sitting at the counter and, and saw a, a good-looking lady came in and wrote got the idea of the song, uh, Hey Good Looking. So what is the magic of this hot dog that draws everyone from celebrities to locals? A fully dressed dog comes with mustard, onions, sauerkraut, and one key ingredient. This is the stuff of legend, Chris's famous sauce. Now, we mere mortals may never know the secret recipe, but we can ponder, what is it about this illustrious condiment that people have craved for over a century? It's a unique taste. You see people that haven't been here in 40 years, and they're coming in and say, ah, this tastes like home. And Chris's also feels like home to the generations of families who've been going there. Since I was in a high chair, I've been eating Chris's hot dogs. One of my favorite things is bringing people here for their very first ones. It's truly a marvel. You know, it's, it's, it's a great place to eat and the friendly people that are in there and the owners and it's been in the same family. Mr. Chris, as he was affectionately called, passed down great recipes, but he also passed down a standard for how to treat people. We literally see everybody from the legislators to a homeless person and, they, and everybody in between, and it's always been that way. Um, and it's, you know, it's everybody's, everybody's the same in God's eyes, and we, that, we live that. So what would Mr. Chris say about his restaurant still thriving after a century? He'd be honored and proud. But he also said, get, get, get back to work. For Simply Southern, I'm Melissa Bowman. Theo told Melissa that the restaurant's busiest day of the year is always, believe it or not, Christmas Eve. Over the years, more and more families have made that their holiday tradition. Theo also said one of his favorite memories is of a couple who have since passed. They both worked in downtown Montgomery in the 1940s and got married over their lunch break at the courthouse. That evening, they went to Chris's to celebrate, and it became a tradition for them to eat dinner at Chris's on their anniversary. That's really sweet. I love that story. I do, too. It's been said that if you eat, you participate in agriculture three times a day. Well, in addition to keeping us all fed, clothed, and a roof over our heads, farmers are doing all they can to care for the environment. Up next on Simply Southern, we'll ask a farmer about how improvements in plants and animal genetics help protect our planet. Ain't nothing like grilling with real wood. Oh, absolutely. There's nothing like it. You got your pecan, your maple, your cherry, your mesquite. Ah, oh, what aficionado. Guess what I'm using. Pine. I know that smell anywhere. I know. It's hickory. No, I'm pretty sure it's pine. When a little backyard barbecue extends to your deck, honey, give us a call. Honey! Alpha Insurance, rated 94% claim satisfaction. Are you covered? As a farmer, I, I grow U.S. from a farm-raised catfish. Doing that, I know it's a safe product, and I enjoy eating it any way my wife likes to cook it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Luke Smelly, and I'm 
Alabama 2020 Catfish Farmer of the Year from Greensboro, Alabama. If you haven't tried U.S. Farm Race Catfish, you should because it's delicious. Simple as that. Soybean is a very versatile product. We make crayons out of it. A lot of the combines you see rolling through the fields have a lot of plastic side panels that are made from a soy product. The soybeans that we grow on our farm mostly goes into chicken feed. Soybean production in Alabama employs over 10,000 people. We grow some of the best soybeans in the world. We go the extra mile to make sure when our name is stamped on it, we know it's the best product we can produce. Tim, what's it like being a professional fisherman? Oh, it's awesome, man. You, you get all kind of perks, you know, like that check y'all see, in, that big check I get every year, you know? Why are you whispering? I ain't gonna tell nobody, I promise, man. Tim, it's I want you to tell everybody you know. You mean like everybody gets a check? Yeah, but I mean, it's based on how much you borrow with us. So it ain't just to me? No, it ain't just you. <laughs> Come on, man. Everybody that's got a loan with Alabama Farm Credit gets a check. Hey y'all, I'm Kim Earwood with Alabama Ag in the Classroom. It's time to sow seeds of knowledge in this rural dictionary. Plasticulture is a way to grow fruits and vegetables. It requires a thin film used as mulch. The plastic is stretched over a raised bed. Drip tape waters and delivers nutrients to the plants through small holes every 6 to 12 inches. Fertigation is when fertilizer is dissolved in water and fed through an irrigation system. For more ag education resources, visit alabamaaitc.org. While you're online, be sure to check out details about our annual Free Summer Institute for Teachers. This Rural Dictionary is brought to you by Alabama Ag in the Classroom. See you next time!